Hey guys, um, so here's the deal. The College Board just released the update for the new exam. So I have more details and I wanted to get it out to you as fast as I could so that you guys could know it too. Um, and we can start kind of moving in the direction of preparing for the exam. All right, so first thing, let's take a second here and talk about the basics. Here's what I know. All right, so the date and the time are different. So the old exam was on May 8th at uh, 8.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, now we're looking a whole week later on the 15th and we're doing two o'clock in the afternoon. So do yourself a favor. If you had that date saved in your head and your, in your phone or wherever, change it to the 15th, make it two o'clock. Okay. Um, they also said on their website that the exam starts at two o'clock, but whatever online portal they'll be using, you can log in, uh, I think up to two hours in advance. I think that was the, the, the amount of time they said. So May 15th, two o'clock, let's do that. Now, as I said before, and is not a surprise, the exam will be given online. Uh, if some schools are open by May 15th, I think those students will be able to take it in school, but it would still be online, so it would be the same test. Um, in terms of where you take it, that's up to you at home, uh, wherever, it doesn't matter. You just need a safe in internet and secure internet uh, uh, connection. Now, in terms of time, 45 minutes. Um, that's the work time. Um, the other, there's an additional five minutes that is designed for you to upload your final response. So what I'm getting the sense of is this, that um, you can take the test on either a cell phone or a laptop. So if your Chromebook isn't reliable or isn't working or the Wi-Fi home isn't very good and you just need to use your cell phone, I believe that is okay. I believe that is something that you can do. So uh, what that probably means is that you can handwrite your response and then probably through pictures, upload it would be my guess. Again, I don't have details yet, but that would be my assumption. Um, the other thing in here that you might have noticed on the screen is this open notebook textbook piece. So let's take a second and talk about that. Can I just tell you how I feel? I think that's them just conceding that you will probably have things in front of you, right? Like you're going to. It's crazy to think you wouldn't. Um, now, I also want to say this. I think that's a trap. Um, you know, I've given open notebook tests before to kids, and almost always the grades are lower than the normal tests. And here's why. You don't study. You just go, oh, it's open notebook. I don't need to study. I can just take the test. I get everything from you. And then you don't have enough time. Or you're, you're not confident in what you're saying because you can't read your notes. Or your hands don't make sense to you, right? So that's the trap. They're trying to trick you into thinking, oh, I don't need to study. I'll just take it. Because in the end, they, they still need a pass rate that's something in line with their traditional pass rate, right around 50%. So they're hoping they'll lull some of people into some self-confidence uh, or self or false sense of confidence by having an open notebook when I don't think that's a good idea. All right. So again, May 15th, 2 o'clock, online, 45 minutes, um, open notebook. I think they're going to take answers handwritten and upload it or you should be able to type it out. Um, we'll see. Uh, I also just want to say this really quickly. They've made it very clear uh, about a couple things here. One, they will be running all your responses through like plagiarism uh, software. So the idea being that you, if you cheat, try to pull something off the internet and use that as your response, they will absolutely catch you. Second, um, I think this is more geared towards me, but they said you're not allowed to have somebody in the room assisting you. So I don't know if they thought the teachers, and I don't know why you would, that'd be kind of silly, might do like a Zoom in the background as your kids are taking the test and then feed you answers. I don't know. It seems like a, a, a foolish thing to do. But yeah, th those are two things I'd be very much aware of. Understand they will absolutely search your stuff for plagiarism and understand that anyone in the room trying to help you and you get caught will not be good for you. Now let's talk about more specifics about this DBQ, right? So, um, this is something I'm a little confused on. I'm hoping I'll get more information. But in terms of the, the time frame, the, the DBQ traditionally was anywhere from units three through eight. Um, we obviously didn't get units eight and nine. Um, the initial release on the modified exam was going to be, it was going to be just covering units one through seven. But now they're doing a DBQ. It appears they're even cutting off units one and two. So what does that mean? Well, you know those review videos I made for you? Some of them don't matter anymore. Um, uh, so I will go ahead and just deactivate them off of Canvas so you don't waste your time. Um, because 
1754 is the end of the uh, French and Indian War. So basically, we're talking road to American Revolution, all right? Um, or actually, no, it would be the French and Indian War. So it's the French and Indian War all the way up to the end of World War II. All right, so that's all they're talking about. Now, that's still a lot to cover, but that is actually really helpful. It narrows it down to some very specific time periods, and that will make it a little bit easier to prepare. Another big change. Um, as you can see, there's only going to be five documents. Your traditional DBQ had seven. So five makes it a little bit easier. But again, you only have 45 minutes. So that means that, that less time means less prep time, less organization time, and in theory, less writing time. Um, now, in terms of what they're grading you, that really hasn't changed. The rubric is essentially the same, um, except for the document numbers are different. So you still need a thesis statement. Um, you still need to use at least four of the five documents to even potentially get full credit. Um, you need outside information. The number they put on, on the website was at least two pieces of specific information not found in the documents. My assumption is what that means, I'm going to ask you or argue that you probably wanted to do two per paragraph of outside information, not just two. It just seems like an obvious thing. And also, if you're writing the DBQ well, you're going to be flooding it with outside information anyway. Um, to get the, all the points, right, uh, you have to, for at least two of the four, talk about either the point of view, historical situations surrounding it, who the audience is, why the document was written. Um, you have to connect things to a broader historical trend or what's going on in the background. Again, this is all stuff that you would probably do anyway. But it's just worth mentioning, the thing that they said that was new, and I think probably the most important thing, the most interesting thing, is this part right here. One document will not be text-based. So what does that mean? Um, well, it probably means it's an image of some kind. It could also mean it's a map. It could also mean um, it's a chart, though I would assume that charts would be considered text-based. I'll see if we can get some clarification on that. But... My leaning is that it's probably going to be an image, a cartoon, a picture, something. All right. So that is interesting. It's new. They've never said that before. So that might change the way we do this DBQ. Now, the last thing I really want to talk to you guys about is the plan going forward. So um, I was going to talk in the next video, um, just kind of, I've already laid out every single thing I want you to do for the new material. It's all there with due dates. Um, like I said, everything I gave you on Wednesday, is technically, you, I won't start grading it until the 13th, so you have through next Sunday. Um, but really, you, it was your one week worth of work. Um, now, the other things I just posted, technically on spring break, I'm not giving you work. There's no new assignments. I can't do that. So the next set of assignments are due, uh, I want to say the 26th of April. So that would be, we come back from spring break. You have that full week to get them done in tournament. All right. Now, can I have an honest conversation with you? Spring break's not going to be a spring break, right? Like, you're not going anywhere. Real, like, everything's closed. The beaches are closed. The, the resorts are closed. Everything's closed. You know, you might maybe go visit a family someplace. But, like, the reality is you're supposed to stay at home. And all the fun things aren't, aren't open. Sorry, guys. It's just real talk. So my suggestion is this. Even though that stuff isn't due to the 20-something of April, just get it done. Just get it out of the way. You know, um, and also if any teacher gives you new assignments that are due like by the end of spring break, let me know. Anyway, so what that means is if you just get the stuff out of the way, then we can focus for the, basically a month on just crushing preparation. So the quizlets that are there for you, I would go ahead and do those. Um, even though they're saying the um, essay topics for the DBQ will not go past World War II, but if it's a later DBQ, or I guess it doesn't much matter, making connections to certain the terminology and ideas from units eight and nine would help you. Like that's one of the things I like to see from different time periods. So go ahead and just do them. Even though there'll be some stuff in there that would be for the late units, it's majority of it is for the, the stuff we've already covered. Um, and also just remember, it's the way it's organized is not by unit, but by theme or topic, which again is designed to help you make those broad connections they're looking for. So take the time and really crush them. Don't just do them once. Do them until you know them cold, all right? That is going to make such a difference. You have 45 minutes on this on this AP exam. You don't have time to be flipping through something looking for a term or a name or a topic or whatever. 
You just got to know it. So use the Quizlets, start studying them ASAP. Get rid of all the work I've already, I've given you to finish up the new stuff and just start doing the Quizlets. All right, next thing, essay topic review. This is going to be the most important thing we can do. Um, I'm going to consult with the other AP teachers I know. We're going to talk to them about, um, or I'm going to talk to them about what are the big topics that we could pull from these, these time periods, right? I already have that chart, but I'm going to actually try to get more information from them, see what they think, focus on what we can. And realistically, guys, knowing what we know, knowing it's going to be DBQ, knowing that we know what time period it's coming from, means that you have this incredible opportunity if you commit to the process to basically have research and planned out that essay before you get it. All right. I'm just saying there's that real possibility. And that's what we should be thinking about. And then the last thing is because they've said that there's going to be a non-text document, which likely means a cartoon, a political cartoon, an image, a painting, a picture, or whatever, I'm going to start to put together, um, I'm going to start to put together like essentially what I think are the big famous images, uh, political cartoons, whatever, of that time period, right? And we'll go through them and we'll try to break them down. And so you understand what it's talking about, what it means. And the reason I think it's really important is those focal cartoons, as we were kind of talking about right before all of this stuff happened, um, they can be really confusing. And so now that I know that there's gonna be some type of image, let's try to actually put the image in front of you before the test. All right, so before I turn the video off, I just wanna take a quick second and just kind of, I, I guess remind you what, what's at stake here, right? Um, the College Board has assurances from universities and colleges that they're going to take your credit for the score, right? So if you're a senior, and I, I know there's these rumors flying around about what it, seniors now have left to do, um, I'll be real with you. There is still something that matters to you here. A college credit is a big deal, all right? It is still a, has tremendous value. Go get it. For the juniors, you, well, you got senior year to worry about, but also think about this. This is an opportunity, knowing that we are going to be able to like, basically intensively study for this one question, whatever it's going to be, we can intensively study for it. it means that this is a, this is the wild, wild west, man. If you don't feel like you were really ready, now you've got a chance to get zoned in and crush this, all right? So I am just saying to you, we've got the time, we've got the, we now have, I think, the ability, I will put in the work. I'm not just going to, I'm not rolling over on this. I'm not just going to quit. I'm not just going to say, okay, whatever. No, I'm putting the work in. So here's the deal. I expect you to do the same. All right. There's a lot at stake here for you guys. And not to mention, you're probably all going to write your essay about the coronavirus. So why not have a happy ending where you manage to overcome the, the, this terrible scourge and get a five, you know, whatever, you know what the essay is going to say. Anyway, so um, if you have questions, please reach out to me. Uh, as always, stay safe. If you have something you need to tell me, please do. But again, I, I just wanted to give you the information that I have uh, about this so that you are in the loop and can feel uh, good and prepared and ready to go. So let's do this. Oh, by the way, um, if you're watching Netflix right now, all right, you should really be watching Tiger King, you cool cats and kittens. All right, bye.